Welcome into iHeart STEM. I'm Leslie Dellery. Today, we're going to talk about the science behind one of the most important parts of a robot, the power. And have they really developed a robot battery that's the size of a grain of sand? You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. We all know how important power is to a robot. You could look around the room and see a lot of different things that require power. But let's talk about the science behind what power is. Power is the amount of energy divided by the amount of time. Now, energy can be a lot of different things, but in this case, we're talking about electric energy or electricity. So power is the amount of electricity divided by the amount of time, which is known as a watt. So let's break down a 40 watt light bulb as an example. What a 40 watt light bulb means is that light bulb is using, by giving off heat or giving off light, 40 joules of energy, which is the amount of energy per second. But now think about a light bulb. Have you ever seen a light bulb that's way too hot or you saw a light bulb that's dimming and it's kind of flickering in and out or maybe a light bulb that won't even go on at all? That's what makes powering a robot so difficult because it's not just as simple as saying, power it or use electricity, you have to balance the electricity over the amount of time. When figuring out a power source, scientists have to balance out a bunch of different factors, but here are a couple of the key ones just to help you get your head around the complexity. So obviously the size of the robot makes a big difference and what do you want your robot to do? The size of the power source is a big deal because is the power source going to be in the robot or is it going to be outside of the robot? Does the power source generate a lot of heat and thereby needs to have some sort of cooling mechanism? How much does the power source cost? How long is the power source going to last? What is your robot going to be packaged in? All of these different things are balanced out. And in the end, usually there's only about one to two sources that are actually going to be viable for a specific robot. So a couple of the key sources that can be used are tethers, which is where you have a cord connected to a power source. I think batteries and fuel are ones that we're all familiar with. Thermal electricity, where heat it gen actually generates electricity, can be used, but it's not great if you actually need a lot of power. And then a less surprising one is springs, which are used in watches. Holding enough power. Nobody wants a robot that can't make it to the store, or you get to the store and you've got to wait there for three hours while your robot charges. So scientists have been trying to balance out two primary things for batteries. Power density, which is how much power you get for the size something takes up, and efficiency, how much power you get out of a source. So the easiest way to think about this is think about your heart, which is probably the closest thing to a battery in a robot. Your heart is about the size of your fist, so it's relatively small in comparison to the rest of your body. Robot batteries sometimes take up 20% of the robot, which means one-fifth of the robot is just dedicated to the power. So to solve for this, scientists have been looking at a couple different things. One, they're looking at different battery sources, zinc, lithium ion, lead acid, nickel metal. They're looking at how these metals work, how they interact with different factors, how long they hold up, and all while trying to get these battery sources into the smallest space possible. Scientists recently figured out how to make a battery that's the thickness of a strand of hair and smaller than a grain of sand. Now, this battery isn't going to be put into a robot that's going to move mountains, but it did prove strong enough or powerful enough to move a robotic arm up and down. And in the future, they think they could use something like this to put this small battery inside a robot that goes into our bodies and releases something like insulin. Now, if you're like me and you're like, uh, I don't know about this batteries and robots going inside my body, Keep in mind two things with this specific type of battery. It's called zinc air. So it's been around since the mid 1800s. So it's very studied and it's considered to be very environmentally safe. The second thing is how this battery actually generates energy. So the zinc interacts with the air, which generates electrodes and creates current. So it's considered to be something very safe to the body and scientists believe they could actually use biofriendly materials in the future. I guess we'll see. Who knew there was that much complexity in powering a robot? Now the real question is, can you do the robot? <laughs> you have fun with that. I'll see you next week.